Peace be with you, everyone. Welcome to the channel. My name is Trevor. Very grateful to have you here. And today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my weekly fragrance rotation. So this is going to be the list of seven that I wore rounding out the second week of June from the 10th through the 16th. Today is Monday the 17th. And so we're just going to be recapping what I wore last Monday. This was Creed's Original Vetiver. Really kind of my first wearing with this fragrance out and about I tested it around the house a few times didn't get any positive attention while wearing this one out but I did get a really enjoyable wearing experience kind of like a nice grassy soap with a hint of fruity-esque citruses so you get that lemon citric bomb effervescence but the nuances in it are a little bit more on the fruity side I've seen this compared to Fruit Loops Kind of like that nice wheat textured, dusty quality that you get from a bag of Fruit Loops cereal is apparent here in the way that the citruses are kind of popping off the skin alongside of that really nice grassy soapy quality. Definitely has a green and yellow color hue to it, the way that the fragrance pops off. Um, I actually did get some positive attention, it just wasn't from a woman, I did get a compliment on this fragrance from a man, but I usually kind of filter those out in my memory because um, people generally want to know what fragrances that women are attracted to, but I did get a compliment from a guy while wearing this one, and um, understandably so. This is really a well-touted and hyped-up fragrance in the community for a reason. I got actually decent longevity with this one, about four to five hours before having to reapply, and this is a newer bottle with the silver metal cap, so I'm sure that this will get a little bit better with maceration, as it seems that more of the modern creeds do tend to kind of blossom into their full potential after sitting for a while. I know that that happened with my newer bottles of Silver Mountain Water and Millicene Imperial. So that was Creed's original vetiver for Monday. Really nice, beautiful, soapy, and fruity vetiver fragrance. Prada Lome Low was my scent of the day for Tuesday. Most of the week last week were in the high 80s and 90s, getting into the full swing of summertime, leaving spring behind us. Although this is great for transitioning from the spring into the summer, the Prada Lome DNA, that really beautiful, soapy, clean, cold quality that the Prada Lome line brings to the table. The cold tone of the fragrance really made this uh, easy wear in the high heat. That little bit of ginger that's in this one that's not found in the other flankers gives it a sparkly, effervescent, and fizzy quality that also plays really well into the high heat. And this was one of the, if I think the only fragrance that I got a lot of positive attention from women. I got complimented by kind of a group of the servers that were all standing around, congregated at work. Said I smelled really good on multiple occasions, both for the daytime shift and the nighttime shift with two different sets of women. So no surprise here, this one went over really well. Beautiful, cold, fizzy, porous feeling in its textural feel, soapy quality fragrance. Prada Lome Low is the one with the blue sticker on the back and I think the most affordable. I've seen this one going for right around like $75 or so, sub 80 on the discounters so definitely worth checking this one out if you haven't already my favorite for the summer from the line next up we have a new one to the collection i picked this up on ebay got a pretty decent deal for it it's only a 30 ml bottle couldn't really find a deal that i wanted to pull the trigger for on a 100 ml and i've got a few clones of this fragrance that i think do a good enough job to not have to get a full bottle of the original but i wanted to experience the dna just because it is a really hyped up fragrance and that is bulgari's tigar like i said i got this on ebay for right around a hundred dollars this 30 ml came with a complimentary travel set they were giving out to i believe some type of travel agency in dubai the emirates travel bags but yeah this i'm glad i got my nose on it i like i said have a few clones junun oud is my top go-to for bulgari tigar clone i also have bulgar or er, black panther from Alexandria Fragrances, another really great one. I feel like the overall blend with this, the original, is much smoother and tra er, it's it's very very smooth. Very there's not a lot of 
ease of which to pick out the individual notes, even though this is a simple fragrance, kind of has that powdery, isoe, super sweet cedar with a grapefruit going on. The grapefruit in all of the clones that I've smelled is a lot more sharp and jarring and sour. This is a lot more powdery and sweet and more well blended, but I think the Junoon Oud in particular has a little bit of this woody depth that I appreciate more than the original here, but this was a really great wearing experience. I did get only about four or five hours of longevity, so looking to wear this one a little bit more to understand the fragrance, but so far a big fan of Junoon Oud over the original in terms of just the price value proposition. Okay, next up for Thursday, John Vervados Artisan Pure. Again, most of the week was high 80s, low 90s, so reaching for just something to cool off and feel enveloped in a nice citric bubble. This one is a great one for that. It has a little bit of a green sharp tone. There's a pentagrain note in here that is one of the key players in my opinion. Otherwise, some of the best citrus in the game, beautiful clementine and musky white floral white tea, easy going, laid back, easy breezy sort of fragrance, especially for those high heat summer days. One of my favorite cheapies of all time. You can usually find this for sub $40 at the discounters and this is a 4.2 ounce bottle. Stunningly elegant citrus fragrance. Really glad to, that this one's on the market. Really big fan of the John Ravados line in general. High quality for good price and this one is probably my favorite not discontinued John Ravados on the market right now. So that's Artist and Pure for Thursday. Friday is the day where I like to wear niche fragrances and this one is a beloved new addition to my collection. Colonia Essenzia from Aqua de Parma. You get that really nice powdery semi-sweet citric tone that you understand and know from the original Colonia. This is an Italian citrus focus on orange and lemon and then you get this powdery sort of clean textural feel and then what this one does differently than all of the other flankers in the line is it brings to the table a really beautiful almost barbershop-esque green quality a little bit of rose to class it up as well kind of gives it a more of cold refreshing tone than some of the other flankers in the line as well so you get this cold green mossy quality very soapy underlying the beautiful sweet citruses. A stunning fragrance, another one that is pretty affordable. You can get this for uh, sub $80 most of the time. I think I picked mine up for $75. For this 100 ml bottle, one of my favorite easy dumb reach fragrances for the summertime. It's just a no brainer, clean soapy citrus, semi sweet, all of the main facets that go into a mass appealing fragrance while holding on to a mature classic elegance at the same time without getting bubble gummy in any sense. So Aqua de Parma Colonia Senzia, a favorite of mine right now for Friday. Saturday, this was one of my first times wearing this fragrance as well, another new one to the collection and one that is my favorite flanker in the line so far. I was lukewarm with the original EDT and the EDP. They both were okay in my opinion and I could appreciate them and I did love them for doing something a little bit different in the designer realm, but this is my go-to out of the three now. This is H24 Herb Vives. This has this really unique aroma chemical called Cycool, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I know that there's something in here that gives this a very spearminty quality, a very cooling in terms of its tonality. And there's some people on Fragrantica and Parfuma that say they don't really pick up the minty qualities in here while it's really some of the forefront for me. That cool minty spearmint green quality going on kind of reminds me a little bit of Ita to Libre de Orange's You Are Someone Like You, Serge Off Torino 21. It's very cool, green, refreshing, beach hut man minty quality going on even though it's not an actual mint note and then the pear in here is a fruity addition to this that kind of veers the fruit sensation that the H24 line is known for away from banana and more towards something almost melon like so a really nice cool fruity pear is what I get with this green all day green and a little bit of that 
classical pond water that this fragrance is kind of associated with. Uh, that is a association I think I picked up from Robes 08 before I really only got laundry sheets from the H24 line, a little bit of a warm and metallic tonality from the original two, whereas this one gets a little bit more cold and drops some of the more metallic edges that the EDT and the EDP have. Really just a big fan of this one, and while I didn't get a direct compliment from this, somebody held a door open for me when I was walking into a restaurant, and after they came in behind me, they said it smells really good in here, so take that for what you will. I don't know if they were commenting on this or the food in the restaurant, but I think this is one of my favorites so far for summer 2024 Herb Vives from H, or H24 Herb Vives from Hermes a go-to for my future summer rotations going forward and then finally Father's Day was Sunday and this is I wore the original issuance of this fragrance to the delivery room for both of my children's births this is the updated reformulated version which I still think is great this is Eau Sauvage 2017 Parfum from Dior really beautiful kind of black licorice style sweetness woody resinous elemy a beautiful beautiful lavender in here that gives it this barbershop shaving foam appeal and then a sparkly effervescent citron citrus going on to really brighten it up and make it applicable in the warmer weather this was a little bit more heavy of a fragrance for the high 90 degree temperatures that we had going on outside yesterday i spent most of the day inside however and wanted to wear this to be on theme with Father's Day although I think like I said it was a little bit heavy for the weather I actually ended up layering this with the cologne flanker to the Eau Sauvage line later on in the day towards sunset it was getting a little bit warm in the house and that layering combo kind of reminded me of Dior Homme Sport 2021 a little bit of that sparkling citric quality from the cologne flanker and the deeper resinous Elemy here kind of gave me a little bit of Diorum Sport 21 vibes, but that was my week in fragrance, starting off with Creed's Original Vetiver, ending off with Dior Eau Sauvage Parfum 2017. Let me know what your rotation was in the comment section down below, and as always, I really appreciate you sticking me to the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.